Um, so this is going to be a presentation of how to uh, write analytical commentaries. We're going to go through the structure, um, both of the piece as a whole, but also the structure of how to write it on a sentence level as well. All right, so first of all, what is an analytical commentary? So it is a piece of extended writing. Um, it's between at least four up to about six paragraphs. Um, it analyzes the features present in a text. So you have to have a text um, to analyze, to write an analytical commentary. Um, and it doesn't follow a typical essay structure, but the structure is still important. So uh, this is the, um, I guess the outline from the exam at the end of the year. So these are the things that they say that you should comment on. So first one is the stylistic and discourse features of the text. Second is the social purpose and register. And the third is the contextual factors um, that affect or surround the text. And you need to refer to at least two subsystems, but don't worry about that too much because um, you will naturally do that anyway. So we'll go through what each of these things actually mean. All right, so first of all, um, this is a Lotus chart um, of the concepts that you need to identify and discuss in an AC. So we've got in the middle, um, all of the, the, like the green ones um, are the things that you, I guess, need to discuss. And then each one is expanded upon in the outer boxes. So I would recommend that you print this off, read through it. I've also put up a blank one on um, the Google Classroom for you guys to um, use as, like, as a planning document for when you have a text with you, go through, have, have this copy in front of you, have your blank copy and have your text and go through and fill in each of the little boxes. So where it says, if we look at fields, for example, um, if we go to the top right box in field, so main, sorry, top left, main theme or topic in a text, you would actually write the main theme or topic in the text that you're analyzing in that box. Okay, so this could be a good planning document for you to use to help you unpack a text um, to be able to write an analytical commentary about it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at is the structure. So the overall structure of an analytical commentary. This, um, so each of these represents the different paragraphs that you have to write about. So like I said before, you need to write a minimum of four paragraphs. First one should be contextual features. Second should be register. The third should be coherence and cohesion or prosodic features, depending on what kind of text you get. So for example, if it is a spoken text, you must write on prosodic features. If it's a written text, you must write on coherence um, and cohesion. Um, obviously, if you get a written text, prosodic features aren't going to be relevant at all. So you'd never write about prosodic features for a written text. Sometimes um, coherence and cohesion might be relevant when you're analysing a spoken text, but it depends on the text. It would need to be pre-planned, um, basically a speech or something, something like that, um, rather than just a conversation. And then the fourth one is stylistic features. Um, which we will get into later. If you do want to write more than four paragraphs, you would do all of those four and then an extra one or two stylistic features paragraphs as well. So if we just go back to look at this, the information from the exam, those four paragraphs that I've just outlined then cover all of those three dot points in, um, in the outline from the exam. <clears throat> Okay, so um, I've put in here the text that was um, on last year's exam. Uh, it was a spoken text, informal, um, so it will be useful for us. Um, I'd like you to read through it in your own time. So if you just um, kind of skip through the video and just have a look through the whole text and then I'll meet up with you at the end. Okay, so now that you've read the text, we're going to look at um, the first paragraph that we need to write about. So the first one is about the contextual features, and we're going to look at what do you actually need to analyse in this first paragraph that you're going to write. Alright, so this is from the 2019 examiner's report about section B, the analytical commentary. So it suggests that you select the prominent features of the text for analysis in an, in an analytical commentary. Refine the structure by putting context, purpose, and register in the introductory paragraph, thus establishing a framework for the analysis. 
And that's what we're going to try and do today. All right, so you've got to think about what's relevant when you're analysing the context. So there's two things we talk about here. We have the situational context and the cultural context. Um, situational context, you've always got to talk about all of those elements in every single analysis you write. Cultural context will be a little bit more um, dependent on the text. So you should always touch on it, for example, um, saying that it's for an Australian audience or something like that. Um, but you might need to go into it in more detail, like talking about the specific values, beliefs, attitudes of the writer or of the, um, the audience or whatever it is, um, depending on the text. Okay, so um, I'd like you just to pause here and have a read through this. This is um, a sample paragraph on contextual features, so an opening paragraph um, based on the text that you've just read. So pause it, have a read, um, and then move on to the next slide. All right, so here I've annotated where they've actually done all of those things. So uh, remember I said that you always need to analyse all of the features of situational context. I've actually pointed out for you where they are um, in this paragraph. So um, this maybe is a good checkpoint for you to, uh, with your practice um, pieces, actually go through and do the same thing. Highlight where you can see that you've written about the register and the audience and the semantic field and go through and make sure that you can tick all of those things off. All right, the register. So what do you look for? Um, what do you analyse? What do you discuss when you're talking about the register? So this is for our second paragraph. Um, so predominantly, you're going to be talking about how formal or informal a text is. Uh, so you're going to obviously be looking for informal features or formal features. And I've just given you a quick list of some examples. This is not comprehensive. Um, it just gives you some ideas of the kinds of things we're talking about when we say informal or formal features. So one of the first things that I do when I sit down to write an analytical commentary on a text is I would have um, two colours or maybe two symbols that I would use um, as I'm annotating and I would go through and highlight or underline, circle, whatever, all the informal features and then um, in a different colour or with a different symbol do all the formal features. So then at the end you can kind of look at a text and visually it will sort of tell you whether the register is more formal or more informal and then you've already got some examples identified for your paragraph um, of analysis as well. All right so same deal again um, can you please pause here read through this paragraph on register and then join me on the next slide. Same again, continuing on with register and then keep going. All right, um, so because this text is spoken, um, we are definitely going to write a paragraph on prosodic features. So this is the kinds of things that you should be looking at. Um, obviously, I have not yet again included an entire list. These are just some examples of the kinds of things you're looking for um, when analysing the prosodic features of a text. Okay, have a pause and a read um, of this paragraph, please. Okay. So um, this, in, just in the interest of showing you what a paragraph on coherence and cohesion looks like, um, I have included a paragraph about it for this particular text. Typically, you'd only write about coherence and cohesion um, when analysing a written text. But like I said, just so you've got an example, we've got um, a paragraph on co co coherence and cohesion for this one as well. All right, so pause and have a read, please. All right, so now we're on to stylistic features. So what exactly are they and how can I write about them? This is probably one of the most common problems um, that students have had in the past is actually working out what does and doesn't constitute a stylistic feature. So hopefully this will help. So um, I have got some examples of stylistic features from each of the subsystems. Pause, have a read through, see if you can add to it. This is, again, not comprehensive. These are just examples. So this is phonology, morphology, and lexicology. And then we have syntax, semantics, and discourse. 
So um, I really want to reiterate, do not use these as be all and end all lists of things to look for. These are just suggestions. There are plenty more for each one. All right, so now we're on to the writing style that we use in analytical commentaries. Most of you would have heard of the fee structure before. If you haven't, I'm going to run you through it now. So fee structure is what we use um, within our paragraphs, but also on a sentence level, it can be really helpful to make sure that you are analysing and you're not waffling on or describing the text instead. So the structure is feature, evidence and explanation. So for feature, it means that you name the feature of the language that you're analysing. So that means that you need to choose a piece of meta language from the meta language list in the study design and use those words in your sentence. Then you provide evidence of where that feature actually exists. So this is why um, we, I guess, encourage you to use line numbers. That can be a really effective way of providing evidence. Um, my preference is to use both a quote and a line number, but you can use um, just line numbers on their own. You shouldn't be using just quotes on their own. Um, but like I said, try and aim for quote and line number together. That's the most effective. Um, it means that you can't have any kind of misinterpretation about what part of the text you're talking about. Also, um, try and stick to really short um, quotes and examples from the text, um, unless obviously you're talking about an EDM or um, some kind of expression that's longer, then that's fine. But uh, for example, if you're talking about semantic field, all of your quotes should be one, maybe two words at a stretch. Then the explanation is where you um, you actually explain how this feature that you've named and the quote that you've put in is relevant to what you're saying about the text. So this means that you need to link it to social purpose, function, mode, setting, audience, one of those things that's in the features of situational context. For example, so I've included two different ways that you can do this. So um, the top one is actually a little bit out of order. So that one uses explanation, then feature, and then evidence at the end. The second one uses the classic fee, so um, feature, evidence, explanation. So just, um, I've put brackets or like boxes around where each of those parts of the sentence start and end. So hopefully that clears up for you what that actually looks like. All right. So this is the final summary of the things that we've just gone through. So in terms of paragraphing, you need to have at least four. They should be about context, register, then prosodic features, or cohesion and coherence. And then at least one paragraphs, um, one paragraph, maybe two to three paragraphs on stylistic features. And that's just your choice. That's whatever, whatever is the most relevant or whatever you think is the most relevant aspect of the text. Um, in terms of the writing, you need to be using the fee structure. Double check that um, you have done that over and over and over again, all the way throughout your analysis. Um, number three is um, planning. So think about the way that you're annotating the text, use different colored highlighters, use different symbols for different subsystems or for informal or formal language um, or for you know, language that relates to the audience or language that relates to the setting. So um, work, figure out what works for you and make sure that you use that consistently throughout your annotations. Um, and then finally, editing. That's really, really, really important. You need to read over your work before you submit it to check that fee has been used throughout um, because often we will get submissions from students where um, they might have done some really good analysis, for example, but if they haven't included, included an example, if they've missed out that step, um, it really, really detracts from the overall, um, what's the word, from how good it is as a, as a whole. So um, make sure you do leave time to do that. That goes for short answers and for essays as well. <clears throat> All right, and some final tips. Don't use I, don't use words like think, believe, that sort of thing. Don't use contractions. You want to be, make sure you're writing formally. If you want to write more than four paragraphs, you can write as many extra stylistic features paragraphs as you like. So you need to make sure that you've got those first, um, first three down and then you write one to two paragraphs on different stylistic features. You need to be practicing this so often. You can do just one paragraph um, it doesn't have to be a whole analytical commentary. You could say, okay, I've got this text that I just found. 
um, I will write a paragraph on how it's coherent and cohesive. So you can do that with any text that you find around you, as well as the ones that are in um, the textbooks that you have and the one that your teachers have given you. You need to remember that everything should be linked to one of the features of situational context. So that's how you actually make it an analytical commentary. It's how you actually do the analysis part of it rather than just describing what's happening in the text. So if you link it by saying um, the use of blah, 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 seen in line, blah, 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 and then you have your quote, um, helps the speaker to blah, 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 blah. You might put in something about social purpose or the audience. So that's how you actually make that analysis. All right, um, that is the end of this PowerPoint. So I really hope that that's helped. Um, if you have any questions, please contact your teacher and I'm sure they will be more than happy to help explain um, any additional questions that you might have um, or look over some practice work that you've done. All right, thanks, bye.